on the last part, you learned about the database entities and how the database entities are just C-sharp classes that represent database tables. But how do the C-sharp data models communicate with SQL tables and vice versa? Well, this is when the entity framework database context file comes into place. The entity framework database context is the most important entity framework class because this class serves as a bridge between your entity classes, which are C-sharp classes, and the database tables, which in our case will be SQL database tables. To add your database context file in an ASP.NET Core Web API project, you need to install the Microsoft.EntityFramework Core package. Let us go to Visual Studio and see it in action. To install the Microsoft.EntityFramework Core package, you need to go to Tools, then NuGet Package Manager, and in here you can either choose the Package Manager console or the Manage NuGet Packages for solution. I'll just select the first option and then in here I'll type install dash package Microsoft dot entity framework core. Then press enter. Now that the package was installed, you can just go to solution explorer. Then inside the dependencies, you can go inside the packages and inside here should have the Microsoft.EntityFramework core. And currently it's at version 5.0.2. Now it's time to create our DB context file. So inside the data folder, I'll just add another class. So add a class. And I'll name this class the app DB context. And then click the add button. Now, the appDB context file needs to inherit from the base class named DB context. And now let us import the necessary namespace. Since we installed the Microsoft.EntityFramework core, that will be our first option. And that's why we installed it in the first place. Now, inside here, let us define the appDB context file to be the file that is going to be used by EntityFramework core as the bridge file between the c -sharp models and the SQL database tables. So for that, let us add in here a constructor. So cd or then double tap. And in here, pass as a parameter the db context options, which takes as a parameter the app db context file. So app db context, unlimit options. And then we need to pass this value up to the base class, which is the db context class. So base and then just options. Now this is all you need to do in the constructor. After the constructor, you need to define the table names for your C sharp models. So for that, I'll type public DB set. This will take as a parameter the C sharp class that we want to use as an entity model. So I'll just type in here book, then import the namespace which is the mybooks.data.models. And I'll name the SQL table books, then get and set. So we are able to use this name to get and to send data to the database. Now, this is all you need to do in here. Next, you need to go to the solution explorer, then inside the app settings.json file. And we have said that the app settings is used to store application related settings like database connection strings, API keys, etc. And in here we are going to add for now just a fake database connection string. We need to add the database connection string in our appdb context file because that way we can configure the SQL database to work with our web API project. So just after the allow hosts, I'll just type in here connection strings and then Inside here, I'll just define the default connection string. Now, the default connection string can be any name that you want to use. I am just using the default connection string because I'll have just a single connection string. And then in here, I'll just type fake db connection. 
Now that we have the connection string, let us save the changes and go to the startup.cs file. So solution explorer, then next startup.cs. And just before the startup, I will just type in here prop, then double tab. I'll change the data type to string and name this property connection string. Now, inside the startup constructor, I need to assign a value to the connection string. So for that, connection string is equal to the configuration dot get connection string and then pass as a parameter the default connection string. Now the default connection string comes from the app settings.json file, this value. So if you want, you can just copy this value, go back to the startup.cs file and paste it in here. And don't forget to add the semicolon at the end. Next, scroll down to the configure services method. And just after the add controllers, we are going to configure the database context file. So configure db context with SQL database. So for that, we need to type in here services dot add db context, then pass as a parameter our db context file, which is the app db context. Let us import the necessary namespace, which is the my books that data then inside here options let go to options dot use sql server and pass as a parameter the connection string and here we see that we have an error so let us go to tools then nuget package manager the package manager console and in here type install dash package and we want to install the package Microsoft dot entity framework core dot SQL server. Then press enter. Now that the packages were installed, let us go back to the startup.cs and in here hover over the use SQL server. Then from the suggestions, use entity framework core. And you can see that the error is gone.